Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to episode three of the Lincoln C project, where I'm converting a set of Lincoln perfect position seats into a set of furniture for my media room. And in this episode, I'm gonna be talking about what I like to refer to as black magic, and that is electrical stuff. Now, last week I took the passenger seat, my power supply, and the seat controller over to my neighbor's house. He's an electrical engineer, and we started digging into the electrical wire diagrams and the seat itself trying to see if we could get things to work. And let's take a look at how that turned out. So a couple hours here over at my buddy's shop and we've got the seat working. We went through the wire diagrams, checked out some pins, and we started with the easiest thing first, which was just to go off of the LIN bus on the factory controller over to the control module under the seat and hook it up to the DC power supply. And surprisingly, all of the power motions work. If you wanna go ahead and we can try headrest up, down, in and out. Got the top of the seat, in and out. Got the whole seat recline. Then forward back, and the thigh bolsters, and the lumbar. So as you can see, the seats actually work. They powered perfectly, and everything on the seat worked from the uh, factory controller. I was extremely happy and really surprised that that worked. As interconnected as cars are now, I had almost no hope that that the door panel seat control switch would actually power the seat. And I figured it would have to go through some other control module before it gets to the seat, but no, it's pretty much just power ground and one command cable from the switch cluster to the seat, and it works. So now that I know that the passenger seat works, I'm going to try to get the driver's seat to work. So let's see if we can make that happen. Now that we saw the power motion works easily on the passenger seat, let's see if we can duplicate that on the driver's seat. Now the toughest part about this is the, the pinouts on the seat controllers are really tiny. And I can't cut anything, obviously, like if I need a wire from the plug here, I just cut, I just cut it and I can strip it and get a hold of it. But these are so tiny, I'm not sure how I'm going to permanently attach something in there. I can't find that plug. Some of these plugs, like for this one, for example, you can get a service kit from the dealer, but there's no service kit for this. So I'm either gonna have to try to solder wires on there very carefully or I'm gonna to have to buy a whole door harness just to grab that plug I'm not sure yet but I'll figure that out later so looking at the wire diagram we have pretty much a ground so this is the seat switch we pretty much have a ground a communication wire and voltage from the battery and that should be all we need now, I'm going to actually try to run it from the passenger seat switch because the, the switch clusters are mounted on the doors for the cars. So, for example, the, the driver's seat, the switch would be on, on your left side. And that's going to be a real pain for when I make the fixtures for the seats. Um, I was planning on having a, a small table or something in between them so you can put cups or whatever on them and it would be a lot more convenient to integrate the switches into that console that's to, to your inside. And the only way it would make sense for the switches is if I switch the, the switch location. So I'd have, I need to put the passenger side on the driver's side seat and the driver's side seat on the passenger seat. So let's see if it will actually control, let's see if the passenger switch will actually control the driver's seat. And from looking through the wire diagrams, from the seat side, all I need to do is connect power to the two, the two large 
pins on the right and ground to the two large pins on the left and the white wire I've already got connected for the communication line. So I think all I need to do is connect power and ground from the switch. Let's see. Okay, with the power supply on and nothing moving. Well, it was pulling a little voltage. Something must have went to sleep. Okay, yeah, I hit a button on the on the seat controller and it started pulling a little little bit of amperage. So it must wake up and then go back to sleep. So if I try, let's see lumbar. Lumbar is working. Got those working. Seat track. Yep, forward back. Okay. Come on, head restraint. There it goes. All right, got the head restraint working. That's awesome. Now that I know I can control the driver's seat from the passenger controller, I will make an assumption, which may be bad, that I can control the passenger seat from the driver's switch cluster. So now the only thing that won't be operable on this is the, uh, the memory functions. And even if I had it on the driver's seat, it wouldn't be functional anyway, because it has to go to another module, and I'm not going to purchase that and try to make it work. So those will just be dead buttons. Now that the power functions are working, let's see if we can get the ventilation to work. And we also tried that on the passenger seat last week, so let's see how that worked. Had a little more success today. Got the blower motors wired. Again, it worked on the passenger seat, so let's see if we can get the driver's seat to work. Uh, the driver's seat is a little trickier, and let me show you why. If we look at the passenger seat wire diagram, we can see over here we have blower, and this is for the cushion. We have blower for the backrest, and heat for the seat, for the lower seat cushion, and heat for the upper. And if we look over here, the passenger seat is controlled by the driver seat module. And that makes it easy because if we look right here, we have a plug C3047B, and that's the large connector under the passenger seat. So to power all of, all of these items over here, I just have to grab the pins from under the seat. And that's pretty easy to do. I've got the pinouts here. That's no problem. And as we saw on the passenger seat, it works. Now, if we go down to the driver's seat, the same items here are controlled by the driver's seat module, which makes sense. The only problem is there's really no good, there's no easy way to grab the wires, like on the passenger seat. It just goes straight from the connection to the driver's seat module to the blower. And if we look over here, I've already gone through and found the pins and cut back the wire insulation. This is the boring stuff that you don't want to see in real time. And if we look back at the wire diagram, you can see for these seat blowers, there are three wires instead of just two. We have a plus, a minus, and a control in the center. And we had a hell of a time with the passenger seat. We were trying different combinations. We couldn't get the blowers to come on. And then I figured let's just try throwing 12 volts on the command signal along with the power and they came on. So I'm going to do the same thing here 
And now that we found the pins, we can see, um, so this brown one, these are the commands. And one of the command signals is for the seat back, one's for the seat bottom blowers. And I just stubbed those out with a wire and clipped them together there and ran that over to my power, which is pin four. So those are all connected together. I've got my ground over here from the wire diagram. And with this combination, it should power both blowers. So let's see what happens if I turn it on. So it's sitting at about five volts. And we've got sound. And I can feel air coming out of both of the blowers. So the ventilation works here. Now being a mechanical engineer, I don't know anything about induction motors, but my electrical engineer friend filled me in that with an induction motor, you don't adjust current to make them go faster or slower like you would with um, like the heated seats to warm them up or to cool them down, you increase or decrease the amperage. But for, a, for an induction motor, you increase or decrease the voltage. So that's gonna be a little trickier to figure out uh, some sort of control system to uh, change the speeds on those. I'm just looking for a, um, like a high and a low speed. I don't really care about being infinitely variable or three, three speed or anything like that. But that'll, that'll be a little bit down the road. So what I wanted to do today was just figure out which pins operate what, and then I can cut those out of the plug because some of the other wires in here need to still connect to the control module because they operate like the, uh, the headrest up down and the power lumbar. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut out the wires that I need and, and group them together and label them as like power plus, power minus. And when I get to the point of actually mounting it to a frame, then I can run the actual wires at the correct length and get that stuff all situated. Now that we've figured out the seat ventilation, let's try the heat. So I've gone ahead and already found the pinouts and have it wired to go. But if we look at the wire diagram real quick, we can see the heated seats have an extra circuit on them. So if we follow pin six here, it goes to a sensor circuit in the seat bottom. And I'm not gonna use that in a car, it's fine, so that it can sense when it gets warm and it'll turn down the temperature. But for the what these are gonna be used for, if the seat gets hot, then somebody hopefully will be smart enough to say, my ass is hot, I better turn this down. So all I'm looking for on plug 341D is pin five and 12. And that comes through, it works like a toaster. It goes through the resistor, which is the heating pad, comes out, goes to the seat back, does the same thing. And then we're looking for pin 15 and 16 on that same plug. And I have that labeled D and I've got just a piece of paper clip stuffed in there for the positive and negative. And let's see if it pulls current when I turn on the power supply. And it's pulling quite a bit of current. So I had this set at 12 volts, but it has a, an amperage maximum on it. And if you, if it can't reach the, uh, if it starts, if it maxes out the amperage, it'll lower the voltage to um, make up for that. So it's, it's lowered it to seven and it's pulling four amps. So it's pulling quite a bit of power, so that's more than likely the heated seat circuit, and it seems to be working. Now that it's, now that I'm pretty sure it's working, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the, uh, the blowers for the ventilation here. I'm just gonna cut them out and mark them as plus and minus, and for heat, and move them off to the side, and that should be everything I need to grab out of these two plugs, and then I can put those back in the 
controller and everything will hopefully still work. Now that I've got all of that stuff sorted out, there's one more thing I want to try, and that's to get the backlighting to work on the switch cluster. If we take a look at the wire diagram here, it looks like illumination is just on pin 15, so I should be able just to do, um, just to try this out, just move the power from 16 to 15, see if it lights up. Let's try it. All right, right now we're on 16, so I just need to move it over one. Let's see if that works. And it works. You can see we've got our backlighted controls. It's perfect. I think this is a good stopping point for the electrical. I know everything works now. I've got everything labeled. I know that I can control the seats with the opposite switches so that I can place them where I want to in a, a table between the seats. So I think we'll pick this, I think we'll pick electrical up after I build the frames for the seats because then I'll actually have a place where I can mount everything and I'll know where to run wires and how to hide wires at that point. So for right now, I guess just subscribe and stay tuned for the next stage of this project.